curing anger. It's a big problem around the world. Welcome to Heart Mountain Church. This is Heart Mountain Ministries, and I am Pastor Rob Fisk. This is such a heavy subject. I've got to tell you kind of a funny story. Linda and I had been married, gosh, six years maybe? It's about seven years ago. And, you know, I brought some baggage with me into our marriage, you know, from my past, my past marriage. And a lot of, I had a lot of anger still. And so, you know, I would still get angry and I'd yell. Didn't throw things, I don't think, anymore, but I used to. And, oh, I've also got to tell you another story in the middle of this story. I got so angry when I was married to my first wife, so angry that I actually punched the floor. I thought I was being smart, not punching the wall, because I just drywalled the walls, and I didn't want to fix the hole. Oh, my goodness, but a floor is much more unforgiving. I broke the fifth metacarpal on my right hand. You can still see this knuckle is a little bit lower than the one on the left hand there. And what a stupid thing for me to do. I'm a piano player. I made my living partially by playing the piano, and yet I got so angry I flew into a rage, which I'm going to teach you the difference between anger and rage. There is a difference. Anyway, I busted my hand. And one of my pastor friends said, don't let your congregation know what you did. Tell them you hit it with a hammer. I said, I can't lie to those people. So I came in, I had a cast, and I had my suit cut up over it, and I played with these three fingers for the worship. But when I got up to preach, I pulled back the, you know, put my sleeve and said, see, pastor is human. And I told the story. And everybody, to a man and to a woman, appreciated that, that I was honest with them. We have to be honest. We can't be liars because Satan is the father of lies. Anyway, back to my story. So it was about six years ago, six or seven, I'm forgetting exactly. And I had some of that anger still. And so one day I was getting really angry about something. I mean, I was just working up a real froth, you know, just getting ready to yell. And Linda, God bless her. She's been growing in the Lord and learning the scriptures. She pointed and she said, the wrath of man does not work the will of God. (gasps) It took the air right out of me. God bless Linda. (laughs) So the scriptures are something very powerful powerful and can help you deflate anger and help you avoid anger and help you become a peaceful man and a peaceful woman. I'll share with you in just a moment. And yes, there is a righteous anger once in a while. All right. So here we go. Let's take the first verse, the one that Linda quoted, that's the best place to start. In James 1, 19 and 20, I'm going to read for the first time from the Weymouth uh, New Testament. It's really quite awesome. And you've heard this before. It's just stated a little bit differently. But listen to this verse and meditate on these two verses, actually. It says, you know this, my dearly loved brethren. But let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. I want to say it again. And you know this, my dearly beloved brethren, but let everyone be quick to hear. That's why we have two ears. Slow to speak. That's why we only have one mouth. And slow to be angry. I'm going to stop just for a second before I read the rest of the verse. You've heard it said, you know, when you get angry, count to 10 before you say or do anything. <laughs> Some of you need to count to a thousand. But this can be done. Anger can be managed. And I'm going to share you with you in a moment. Anger itself is not a sin. It's what you do with the anger that's a sin. Oh, boy. Let me get to it here. Let's read the verse again. Way with New Testament. James 1.19. You know this, my dearly beloved brethren. But... Let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. And it goes right on. Most people stop right there. No, the Holy Spirit didn't stop and say, verse 20. No, this this connects right together. Verse 20 says, for, and that connects to two verses, for a man's anger does not lead to action which God regards as righteous. Wow. You know, most Christians don't know this verse. I didn't know this verse. I'd read it, but it really wasn't inside. 
And then when Linda spoke it, boy, it was like an arrow right into the heart, just popping that bubble of anger and uh, that froth that I was just working myself into. And I said, you know what? You're right. What a glorious thing to have a godly wife. All right. So what about God? Doesn't he get angry? Great question. Let me start with the title of a sermon that was preached by Jonathan Edwards way back in the 1700s before the great, is during the great, uh, the first great awakening. His sermon was called, It's a Fearful Thing to Fall into the Hands of an Angry God. And because of the sermon, thousands of people right here in the USA repented in tears and turned to Jesus. It was a great revival. So there is a righteous anger. So let me give you an example of Jesus getting angry. Yep, Jesus got angry. Are you ready? Here we go. The scribes and Pharisees were watching. Jesus was in the temple on the Sabbath. They were watching like a hawk to see if he would heal on the Sabbath day. So here's Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 in the English Standard Version. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they, the scribes and Pharisees, watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. Wow. Sounds like the Chosen series we've been watching. All these scribes and Pharisees have been, were watching Jesus to accuse him and to bring him before the council. It's uh, it's very, very, uh, very accurate in the bit. All right. Verse, uh, verse 3, and he said to the man with the withered hand, come here. Another, uh, another gospel says, stand forth. And he said to him, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger. Stop for a second. Oh, yes. Jesus experienced the full range of emotions that we all do. I mean, Jesus wept in one place. Jesus made a whip and drove off the animals and overturned the tables of the money changers because they were defiling God's temple. Oh yeah, God can get angry, but it's a righteous anger. And it's a, well, let me just read the rest of the verse. We'll see what Jesus did with the anger. Verse four. He said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to kill it? But they were silent. And he looked around them with anger, Jesus, looking with anger, grieved at their hardness hardness of heart. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. Wow. So Jesus was angry. But what did he do with the anger? It kind of tickles me because I'm thinking, you know, he was angry and he says, just to spite you guys, and he healed him. <laughs> I might be wrong on that. Jesus might not have that kind of, you know, spiteful, but who knows? Who knows? Just a thought. But what a wonderful thing Jesus did in response to anger. So very, very important. Listen to me. Anger itself is not a sin. It's what you do do with it that can develop into a sin. So I was counseling in my first marriage because we have a lot of marriage problems and there was a lot of anger. The counselor told me one time something very interesting and, and I believe it. He said anger produces a lot of energy. He said, so don't take it out on your spouse. Go and clean the house or go and finish a project or mow the lawn. You know, just that energy will help you and aid you finish a project that you never did finish. And you will using that that uh, energy that anger brings out. So don't take it out on your spouse. Do something good with it. Amen. So next verse. I'm going to give you a couple more verses. Then I'm going to give you the cure for anger, which is also in the Bible. Ephesians, uh, I think it's 426. My printer is kind of funny here. Yeah, I believe it is. In the Berean Study Bible, listen to this. Be angry. Yeah, let me read that again. The Bible is telling you, be angry. So it's not a sin to be angry. The Bible wouldn't tell us to be angry if it was a sin. It says, be angry, yet do not sin. Huh. So it's what you do with the anger. Be angry, yet do not sin. 
Do not let the sun set upon your anger. It's really good to patch things up before going to bed at night, if possible. Hmm. It's a whole other subject. All right. I did a sermon. You'd have to go to YouTube, type in Heart Mountain Ministries, and when our page comes up, you'd have to click on videos and scroll down and go back. There's lots of great subjects you can look at. But I did a sin, uh, a, sin <laughs> a sermon called The Seven Deadly Sins, and it's pride, covetousness, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, and sloth. I called it PC Lages. Pride, covetousness, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, and sloth. I love the word sloth. It's such a funny word to me. It means lazy, obviously. But anger, that's interesting. Anger, like I said, according to the Bible, is not a sin. But what happens is you get so angry that it becomes... It just it consumes you, and then I believe it's demonic because rage enters in. That's when murders are committed. That's when people hurt people. Amen? So being angry is one thing, but letting it foam and just foment and keep getting worse and worse, you've got to stop it because you'll open yourself up to demonic uh, forces, and they'll be applied. They'll be happy to help you hurt somebody or kill somebody. So... Anger is not the sin. Rage, in my opinion, is. So I need to go back and change that sermon. <laughs> no, I actually mentioned it during the sermon. So you probably already know this, but I have to say, alcohol enhances rage. <laughs> Before I was a, a minister, I played in a rock and roll band. This is way back. It was a, one, one bar we played at was called the Bandy Roost. It was on 11 Mile in Madison Heights in Michigan. And it, it was amazing. Every Saturday night, there was a fight. You could set your clock by. It was getting near closing time, and guys are getting real bearded up and so forth and whiskeyed up, and all of a sudden, somebody, oh, yeah, yeah. And I watched the guy take a bottle and break it over a table and go after another guy. And we had these great big speakers called Frasier speakers, and we would just pull them in front of us, and we were just going to hide behind it until the fight was done. It was kind of terrible. Alcohol does that. And I have to say, the week after we quit that bar, somebody was shot and killed in there. I'm not really surprised. Anger is amplified by alcohol. So be careful. All right. Here's an example in the Old Testament of how the wrath of God does not, I mean, the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Moses got angry. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Do I have time to read it? Yeah, I think I do. In uh, Numbers chapter 20, verse 6. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord said to Moses, Take the staff, you and your brother Aaron, gather the assembly together, speak to that rock before your, their, their eyes, and it'll pour out its water, and you'll bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock can drink. Pause just for a second. <laughs> Moses had already done this once before. God, the, Moses was praying for water, and God said, go strike the rock, and water came out. This time, he said to Moses, speak to the rock. It was going to be a great miracle and a, a great example of the spoken word that God gives to man, and man can speak and things happen. It's an amazing subject. All right. So verse 9, so Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he commanded him, and he and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock. And Moses said to them, listen, you rebels. Ha <laughs> ha, stop for a second. If you can kind of tell in the context, he's really mad. He's really angry with the people. And I think he flew into a rage because watch what happened. Verse 10, he and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock. And Moses said, listen, you rebels, must we? Oh, that's another subject. He, he, he says like, we are going to bring water. Well, God was going to do it. Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of the rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out. I mean, God was still faithful. And the community and their livestock drank. Ah, but the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land which I give him, give them. Man, think about that, folks. He had spent years bringing people to the promised land, but because of his anger, 
it didn't work the will of God. And he was restricted from even going into the promised land that he brought the people to. What could letting anger do in your life if you let it fly into a rage? Be careful. So, oh, one more verse, James 3.16. It says, where envying and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. Boy, I don't have time, but I've seen that in a lot of churches. Envy, strife, anger, all of a sudden, all kinds of sin erupts in the church. That's why we've got to walk in love and love each other as Jesus loved us. Another subject. Okay, the cure for anger. I'm going to give you two verses. First in James 1.19. I read it before. But listen. Listen to it again. You know this, my dearly beloved brethren. But let everyone be quick to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to be angry. And listen to me now. Meditate on this verse. A lot. When you meditate on scripture and you let it get way down inside... It becomes a part of you and begins to control your actions. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. The word is powerful like that. It's a sword. So you got to meditate in the verse. Let every man, every man be quick to hear. Okay, Lord, I'll be quick to hear. I'm going to listen carefully to everything, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Slow to speak. So I'm not going to speak until asked to speak or when it's appropriate. And slow to anger, or to be angry. Yes, Lord, I will <laughs> um, count to 1,500, uh, whatever it takes. I'm going to be really slow to anger because I know now that my anger does not work God's will. Mm -mm -mm. All right, one more. The Lord's servant must not strive, it says. It's in Second Timothy 2.22. New International, it says, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything, listen to this, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because they produce quarrels. So stop for a second. So when if you start hearing people argue, walk away. So walk away. It could be a family gathering. It could be Christmas. An argument starts, walk away. Go out on the porch. Get some air. Don't be involved. So I'll read it again. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And you know they do when the Bible's uh, saying it for sure. And the, and the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Oh, stop. we gotta we got to meditate on that a lot. The Lord's servant must not quarrel. When we know the Word of God, we know it's the will of God. And when we get it down deep, we can say, nope, servant of the Lord must not quarrel. I am not going to quarrel. So the, the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Indeed, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. And two more verses, those who oppose him, you know, who's who being angry with you, him he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and that they will come back to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. And I don't have to have time to read the last verse I had for you, but the disciples, <laughs> it was amazing. Jesus was heading to Jerusalem and the Samaritans wouldn't let him pass through. And the disciples said, I'll put the reference down here, Lord, shall we call down fire from heaven and destroy them? And Jesus said, Watch, you don't know what spirit you are of. Mm. Think about that. Meditate upon that. All right, let's finish with the acronym WWJD. What would Jesus do when you're in a situation you might be uh, really well off to think about that? Let's pray. Father, I pray that the people who have just heard this powerful word from your word, from your Bible, help them, Father God, to take it in, to take it in deep. Let it become part of their spirit and part of their uh, modus operandi so that when situations come up, they know how to act. They know how not to fly into a rage. They know how to uh, 
to do what the scripture has just told us to do. We thank you for this teaching. I thank you, Lord. It's helped me in my life tremendously. And I pray it helps the people at home. In Jesus' name, amen. I get out of time to do the usual closing. So don't forget to like, uh, share, comment, and subscribe. Because comments and subscriptions makes us rise up in YouTube and people can find this word easier. This way you're helping me spread the gospel. If you want to support the ministry, just go to heartmountainministries.com. Our webpage will give you all the instructions there. But listen, it's all free. Just take it as much as you want. Listen to it as much as you want. Go to our YouTube page and listen to all the subjects you want. It's a real blessing. So come back next week. I'm not sure we're going to continue the curing you know curing series we did curing anxiety curing worry and now curing anger we'll see if the lord has one for next week on curing so come back and see won't you god bless you